Hello everyone! So today I'm going to be checking out some veins and collecting some samples of vein material to later hopefully process for gold in my crusher once I have that thing built. So you can see i got a vein right here behind me and I've actually been to this location before in a past video where we actually collected some pyrites and galena samples. If you want to check that out it'll be in this corner. It's an older video. So the plan is for today to collect some samples. Not a whole lot because i got to carry it out of here. It's quite a hike. And uh, hopefully explore around the area a little bit more and see if I can find where these veins are coming out at and see if there's any other veins in the area. So let's get to it. So right here is where we worked in the past. And here is where I'm hopefully going to grab some of my samples. I like this layered quartz. There's some pyrites in there. They're still there, surprisingly, after being exposed for a year in the elements. You can see the pyrites. There's some nice pyrites there. And some pyrite there. So I'm wanting to find where that banded quartz veining is because that looks like to be the richest area for possible gold that could be in here if there is any gold. So a little bit about the geology. This formation here is the lowest formation member of a group of sedimentary rocks. Now in areas in this particular formation usually has pyrites in the bedding planes of the rock itself and in areas it's uh, a quartzite which is a metamorphosed sandstone and it's the bottommost layer of this formation. Now this formation of sedimentary rocks has been and is known for its gold. Uh, that doesn't mean it con contains a ton of gold, it just contains some gold. So usually wherever you find this certain formation of this rock you usually find gold, whether it be super small fine gold or possibly larger chunks running through veins. There's some gold mines that are further to the east of here that are mining gold in the same formation in veins. So that same formation of sedimentary rocks is here and I have some veins running through with some pyrite, so it's all a good sign. There might likely be some gold here, but the question is how much. Now quartz is not easy to dig into at all. It's a lot of work. But I want to show you what I'm looking for right up here. Of course I'll show you this. There's an ant to get off. See the little crystals? That's neat. But I don't want that. So I'm looking for the quartz vein that has this going on right here. See the darker banding? Right there. That's what I'm interested in. You can see the pyrites in there. Now if I can find the source of this, that would be great, because I want to take as many samples of this as possible. Up here I'm putting a pile of the banding rocks. Like you can see here, you can see that dark, those dark sulfides, I'm guessing, that are lining the quartz. See, it's layers. Layered quartz. Banded quartz. That's what has the pyrites on it. And there's this weird mineral here. I'm not sure what that is. Pretty reflective stuff. The good news is, is it doesn't look like too many people have been digging here since I've been here. I might be on to something right here with this vein because I just popped this rock out and cracked it open. And you can see there's lots of eroded uh, pyrites probably. The vugs, very vuggy rock here. There might be gold in there, you never know. What I should be doing is collecting all this loose soil, this dirt. This is all the rusted uh, oxidized stuff out of the vugs where the pyrite used to be. So if there was gold in there, it, sh it should be in the soil now. So I should be soil sampling, but there's no water around here for me to pan, but I could take some home, I guess, but let's see if I can get this boulder out of here now. Nope. It's stubborn. Oh, big one. I think I need bigger pry bars. Should have, should not have uh, worn my boots. Where's my pick? Whew. 
getting it out. Again, look how buggy this material is. I'm pretty sure this all used to be just full of pyrite crystals or galena. And now it's all oxidized out. So I'm pretty sure this is a good little vein right here for this part of it. The upper part where I was digging earlier didn't have anything in it. But somewhere in between here we found some pyrites and here we got some massive bugs. So just roll that down and see if I can get this massive boulder split. Oops, almost took out my tripod. Well this this is definitely the spot for this vein. You can see how buggy this material is. Uh, unfortunately the whole boulder is weathered out and oxidized. But you can see where the either Galena or, or Pyrites used to be. There's some kind of golden looking stuff there, but it, that's pr probably not gold. But yeah, see how oxidized some of this stuff is? And a lot of these quartz pieces feel a little bit more dense than usual. But you can see this boulder is just completely... I imagine this all used to be Galena for the most part, or Iron Pyrite, one of the, one of one of those. <laughs> So I'm going to venture up this road here and see what else I can see in the hillside, like quartz right there. Got some more signs of the veins, probably from up above. Not that sticking really out of the hillside yet. There is another vein nearby that seems to have more galena, but just the same amount of pyrite, I would say. And that vein seems to be going in the opposite direction. There seems to be multiple veins, especially where I'm at right now. I took the strike and dip last year of the veins that are in this mountain side, but I haven't done that with the other vein. That way I can map it out on Google Earth. You can see that. You can see the, where I was working right there. And right back there you can see there's a quartz vein sticking up out of the mountainside like a spine which means the same vein probably runs right up there on the hill and maybe up and over to the other side of the mountain well that didn't take long there's another vein sticking up right there and another one i can probably get the strike and dip of this one it's almost a vertical vein almost almost 90 degree dip on that then to get exposure this one Oh, is that what I want right there? Maybe, see the layerings? It doesn't quite look the same though. There's some bugs right here. Not sure if those are crystal bugs or pyrites, probably both maybe. But see, you can see the layerings here. I think this is what I want right here. Sure, I think this is what I've been looking for. Cool, you can see the different layers. I'm pretty sure that's what I've been looking for. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I found the source. Cool, cool. See it? There's the pyrites. Yes, this is what I was looking for right here. Not that, um, not that whole white quartz. Not the chunky mass quartz, but this layered stuff. This is what I want. You can see the pyrites. Yes, cool. Now I know exactly where it's at. Awesome. Yeah. One thing I always think about is, if there was gold here, you'd think it would already be mined, right? Not necessarily. Um, the logging here took place about six years ago, seven years ago-ish. So they could have ripped all this stuff up and it could have been well hidden during that time. So maybe there could be something here. We'll have to see. I did notice that they, that other vein that's about a half a mile away from here, there are some old prospecting trenches in there. They gotta be at least a hundred years old because there are big trees, probably a couple hundred year old trees growing inside these trenches. What kind of rock is this? Oh, this looks to be a quartzite. Yep, we have quartzite here. So, change in the st stratigraphy somewhere. And there's maybe it's just a, a vein of it, or not a vein, but a layer of quartzite. Now, some places you can get gold in quartzite. So, not sure about this location. I doubt it. Some of this almost looks like quartz vein, but a lot of quartzite in this area here. So just a little bit ago I mentioned uh, strike and dip, taking the strike and dip of this vein. 
For those of you who don't know, that is a type of measuring system that they use in geology to measure all kinds of things, such as uh, the striking dip of veins or bedding planes in sedimentary rock. So how it works for a bedding plane, um, actually I'll use an example of the vein because it's similar. So the strike would be the direction the vein is heading. So you'd use, uh, it's a, some kind of tool, can't think of the name of it, it's like a compass and it has a needle, so magnetic north, and you line that up and you take a measurement of which way this vein is heading heading on a, uh, on a compass direction, if that makes sense. I'm not explaining this very well. <laughs> so if I had a needle compass, let's say the needle is pointing north, let's say, let's say the hammer's my needle here, let's say it's pointing that way, the vein is going this way, so you would mark down roughly, get as close as you can, which way this vein is heading on the angle of the compass. So let's say 180 north or something, uh, something along those lines. I didn't explain that very well, but the dip is pretty simple. That's the direction the vein is heading into the ground or the bedding plane is tilted. So that would be the dip. And this is almost a 90 degree dip, so it's almost straight up and down. Uh, now let's say my hammer here is representing the dip of a bedding plane. Uh, basically the dip is, if you were to drip water, which way the water would go downhill. So the dip can be many different angles, could be 10 degrees, could be 40, 50, 80, 90. If it's 90 then there, it, there really isn't a dip, it's just straight up and down. But that's basically what strike and dip is. I c probably could have explained that better, but at least you kind of get what it is now, I guess. But I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna measure strike and dip, so once I have this, I'll mark down the geologic, uh, not the geologic, the, geo, uh, the GPS data, so I know where this is at, and I'll map this vein roughly onto Google Earth so I can kind of see what's happening. I already have the veins down that way mapped. Uh, if I get this one mapped, then I can kind of see the zone of uh, where these veins are heading, hopefully, and better get, be get a better idea of what's happening here. You can get an app that'll measure strike and dip on your phone, Oh, or you can buy the tools. I have a cheap uh, plastic one. It was about 20 bucks. It does an okay job. Uh, there's slightly more expensive ones uh, that are about 40 bucks. And then there's what the professional geologists use, and those will run up about five to six, seven hundred dollars. So they're pretty expensive tools. But uh, there's pros and cons between an app or the actual device. I actually like having a device in my hand besides a phone, but um, I left mine at home, so I quickly downloaded one on my phone to do this. And what's cool about the phone is it automatically logs all the information for you. If you're using a handheld, uh, non-electronic device, then you have to write it down in a notebook or keep it logged somehow in your memory, because everyone's memory is pretty reliable nowadays, right? <laughs> some buggy material for some pirates uh, weathered out. I was hoping to find some bigger chunks of veiny pyrite like I have in the past. I have a nice big chunk of uh, quartz with a nice vein of pyrite going through it. I was hoping to find some more of that. Today. Whew, that thing's pretty heavy there. And down goes the sun. Well, I should probably be wrapping up here pretty quick. Well, this looks obvious now that someone was digging here. Yeah. I don't think enough people come up here, so hopefully it'll be okay. But I'm gonna take a couple samples that have more so up on the hill, but you can see some of the layering in there. Uh, a couple of these have some pyrites in them, but not as much as I was hoping to get. I was hoping to get some decent samples of just the pyrite, but uh, apparently not today. You can see it's right there. There's some pyrites. All right, it is time for me to get out of here. Unfortunately, I have to hike out of here, and it's going to be quite the hike, especially with a bucket of rocks. That's why I'm not filling it all the way full, because I learned my lesson last time I did that. Just show you a couple of the samples. You can see pyrite, hopefully, in there. Some of that black... Uh, I'm not sure what the black is exactly. It's either sulfides or some kind of gouge material of some sort. 
You can see there's some of the pyrites in here in this quartz. This is what I'm after. You can see those bands that are in here. There's some pyrite right there. So overall, this isn't very bad looking material. I'd be curious to see if there's anything in here at all. But that's why I'm collecting the samples. So I can find out. There's some nice pie right there. Too bad that wasn't chunky gold. That would be amazing. But it's not that easy, unfortunately. And again, there's people that seem to stumble upon gold and on their hikes or something. This will probably be my last time coming up here before winter. I'm moving away so I can be closer to the university. I'm moving down, or up I should say, in as far as my education goes. I should have my associates at the end of the year, but to continue on I'm going to have to go to a new school, the big university. So I'm going to be further away from this location. So. Uh, this might be my last time being here in a while, especially if the snowfall coming and this being higher up. There's snow just on the other side of the valley over here. So anyways, hopefully when I get my crusher built, we can start crushing some samples and I'll have to either buy or make a uh, furnace to melt down some of the stuff because I imagine I might be able to get a little bit of the gold out panning but I imagine that I can get more out if I smelt it. So it's going to be a learning process because I haven't done either of those. But, well, I've done panning actually. <laughs> so until next time, I'll see you all later. Take care.